what the Legacy Project is about. Let me hear you if you know. Yeah? All right. Now, that's a lot of you, but I'm well aware that there's a number of you who you've not yet stepped into what the Legacy Project is about. So I just want to take a moment before Pastor Dan comes to continue our series on Joshua, just so that all of us will be in this together. As you can uh, see today with our ninth graders in the communion service and our 10th through 12th graders in the live service, the student ministry of Faith Bridge is alive and well. The road missions program that corresponds to it, likewise. All good, all exciting. Would you believe that every week we have between 300 and 500 kids, youth, coming here and still using as their home base the room that we built called The Loft, which was designed 14 years ago before many of them were born when we were still meeting at Kleb Intermediate School, dreaming and praying, maybe God, someday you'll give us 100 kids or 150 kids. And now look what's happened. So what does that mean? Well, uh, more than a year ago, we started to figure out we are going to have to add some space for our youth ministry and our missions program for the youth of the road to keep multiplying and to keep expanding. So we brought in a consultant who specialized in something we'd never heard of, and that is the pre-campaign survey. Just saying, why don't you get congregation feedback just to confirm that you're on the right track? We got that feedback, and the feedback was very confirming. Thumbs up. Everybody said, of course, we see the need for that. Student ministry's always been a priority ever since your first youth pastor 20 years ago, Ben Stewart. And so, of course, this is the right next thing. The surprise <clears throat> of that campaign or of that survey was that we had uh, a number of people say, that was pretty smooth, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> I can feel it coming. Um, we had a number of people who said, but what about the adults? We need space for the adults. What sort of space? Well, space, people said, for those touch point moments in life, when you get married, when you got to get buried, uh, when babies are dedicated, marriage vows are renewed, special occasions like this. We don't have a chapel. And so a lot of people told us we need that and space for adults to have classrooms as well. And so with this, we went to our architect and said, okay, here's what we need and here's our budget. And they said, you want all of this and a chapel with this budget? And we said, yes. And that's the reason we chose you, because you can do this. That's what we've been told. So <clears throat> Wonder of Wonders, they actually have done an amazing job, Studio Red has. And so in the youth center is a larger room. There's a lot of other space, but there's a larger room that will be designed for our senior high kids in the evening and our seventh and eighth graders in the morning. And uh, we've got a picture for uh, you to kind of see what that room would look like. Yeah, and so they can shoot it up with every color. They showed us what it would look like with red and gold and all sorts of, so that's pretty cool. But then we said, okay, but now what about this chapel? And they said, well, this is what we think that we figured out. We think we've designed something that could be convertible into this special sacred space that you've said that you need. And this will fall within, generally, the budget that you've talked to us about. We said, could you give us an idea of what it would look like? They said, well, what we'll do is we'll flip some panels, change some lighting, and voila, you have a chapel. And we're, yeah, isn't that pretty cool? We're like, that's very impressive. What about the adult space uh, for classrooms? They said, well you've told us that the kids are gonna go out to this new space, so that gives us the whole upstairs now. We can convert the upstairs, we think we can get you seven classrooms, and you have two services on Sunday, that's uh, nine o'clock and 11, that's 14 spaces that you could do adult education in for people who wanna take uh, classes that are six and eight weeks long, things like uh, parenting and marriage, and. Dave Ramsey, financial uh, management, all that kind of stuff. We're like, wow, what would that look like? And they said, well, 
Here's a picture of what the upstairs space would look like. And um, so we're really liking um, what they have come up with. It's put together in a little video that will give you even a little bit more of a feel for the whole project. Take a look. I am so excited to see students in a space that is designed purposely for them and purposely for our model of ministry that we run. I think one of the greatest resources that God has given us is community. It's the people around us. Like, He didn't create us to walk alone. One of the biggest things that I've seen, especially with high schoolers, and why I think they love coming to Point Break on Sunday nights is because it feels like it's theirs. It's, it's such a big advantage and it's such a big importance for them to have a space where they feel like it's theirs. The road has never really had a permanent home on Sunday mornings. Right now we kind of set up shop in uh, an orange tent. The road building enables us to uh, continue to see our ministry thrive. Having a space for that stuff to live makes us more efficient as a ministry, allows us to really focus on what matters most, and that is the care of people. I think Sunday morning and throughout the week, if we had discipleship booster space where we could help people be equipped, where somebody would have an opportunity to experience a group and say, wow, that was really great. So great, I wanna join a grow group. And that's why I'm excited about all these opportunities we've come up with and the needs we've identified. And I'm ready to get rolling. I just have to have a spot to do them in. One of the things I'm looking forward to is dedicated sacred space. There are those moments in our lives where atmosphere really matters. It's really amazing to think you can take space that most of the time is dedicated to young people. And then with the flip of a few panels, some change in the lighting, and suddenly you've got sacred space that's appropriate for a baptism or a wedding or a memorial service. Well, the purpose is bigger than just investing in um, a student. The purpose is investing in people who change the world around them for Jesus. It all starts with them having a place where they can go and feel like this is where I belong. That right off the bat, they're building relationships, they're plugging in. Uh, it's so, so key to the ministry that we do. Okay, so the question is raised, how much are we gonna to need to raise to make this happen? The answer uh, is that we're gonna to have to raise $10.5 million, yeah. Exactly. That's over and above our normal offerings because our normal offerings are making everything that is Faith Bridge happening that we feel like God is calling us still to make happen week after week. And so uh, the consultant said, here's a way that it could happen. Uh, it's just a mathematical computation of, of a structure. And, and what I was thinking I would like to do in our remaining time is just start at the top and we'll work down. If you could take that top one, would you just raise and we'll just knock it out? No, not really. All right. So maybe we won't do that. As a matter of fact, 130 of our long timers and uh, leaders gathered last Sunday evening at a pace setter uh, event because they've been going through the process ahead of you and have been seeing all this ahead of you and they made their pledges ahead of you to set the pace last Sunday night and would you believe of the $10.5 million they pledged 6.5 last Sunday night. Yeah, <laughs> praise the Lord. And so that is incredible. And that leaves four million. And the good news is we've got that too. Now, most of it's still in your bank accounts, but we can work through that. That's, <laughs> that's just details. All right. So um, what I want to do is show you another uh, uh, pyramid. And this is what will be needed yet to go. This is a reformatted peer, uh, uh, sort of matrix that gives you an idea. Now, I want to take you uh, through a brief exercise because um, I'll tell you what you do when you look at something like this. If you're like I am, your eyes sort of go down to a number and you say, okay, I think that could be my number. Or maybe you say literally I, it might be in between one of those lines or just underneath that bottom line, but you have a number that you're working on in your, in your mind. And I'll tell you something about that number. Uh, that number is what I would call your reachable number. 
You know what a reachable number is? That's something that you can reach without even thinking about it and praying about it. That, that's the kind of number you can reach when you're coming out of Kroger's and the girls say, would you like some Girl Scout cookies? And we're like, yeah, sure, I'll take two boxes. You reached that without even thinking about it, right? That's your reachable number. But what those who went last Sunday have been going through, and I'm going to ask us to go through, is moving to the next step. What is that? Reprioritizing. What does it mean to reprioritize? That means instead of doing this, I'm going to put my funds here for the next 26 months. And that's, that's by the way, the, the length of time that we're talking about is a 26-month campaign. Reprioritizing. I've already heard touching stories of people who've said, you know, instead of doing the car thing, we're just going to just keep going and, and we're going to push into this. Instead of doing this, we're going to do the youth thing because look at the fruit that's coming forth from that. We can get back to the other thing in a couple of years. Reprioritizing. And the last R is relying. What does that mean? Well, Paul said in 2 Corinthians that we walk by faith and not by sight. That's what we're talking about in um, this season, is saying, let's walk by faith and not by sight, relying on God. You say, okay, when are we going to make our commitment? When are we going to make our decision? Next Sunday. You're like, boy, that's fast. Yep. Some of the feedback that came back is in prior campaigns, they, you've said, they, they kind of went on and on and on and on. And we said, well, let's just try it this way. And if we don't hit it, then we'll just go on and on and on afterwards. <laughs> so, so let's just knock it out next week. And, um, and God will get the glory and, and on we will go. In a moment, they are going to p- pass out to you some little brochures that you can be thinking about and pondering this week as you work the three R's and pray about what is God calling me to do. Now, some of you are hearing me right now. You're like, yeah, that's for them. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's you. If you come to Faith Bridge and you're part of Faith Bridge, are you taking advantage of the ministries here? Your kids are involved. I need you, every single one of us, to step in at some level saying, I'm going to step in and actually make an above and beyond commitment for the next 26 months next Sunday. All right. David and Heather are a couple who've been here for years, and um, they told their story uh, the other night so winsomely. I said, would you mind telling it again for everybody. I I was just inspired by it, and I think you will be. After they uh, share on video, Pastor Dan will come and bring us God's word. Take a look. I'm David Raines. And I'm Heather Raines. We have been coming to Faith Bridge for 15 years. Earlier this spring, we were uh, approached about potential feedback on the new building campaign. And we had been through this a couple of times, three or four times uh, with the other buildings. One of the huge blessings that I had going into that first building campaign was the mom's group because I had little tinies at home and I was going slowly crazy because when you have tinies at home, you can't, you don't have a solid thought. And so mom's group was just a touchstone that I wasn't alone and it was a place where I could talk to my peers and have friends and I really feel like in that I went from kind of a biblical knowledge of or like an academic knowledge of the Bible and of God to really having kind of a practical everyday um, application. It just started to permeate my life and how I parented and how um, our marriage was and it was very exciting. Well now that our kids are 11, 13, and 15, this time came around and it was also perfect because, oh, because I go up there and I serve um, with the eighth graders and we are packed in, like we're close. You know, we've got groups right next to each other and we're straining into here because there's so many kids in the room. So I feel it. I feel the need for the kids and the, um, the youth building. I'm excited to see what the spiritual impact will be for that um, because I know when we built the children's building, something we didn't expect was that our kids would become little evangelists and start inviting their friends. And, inv- and I mean, I can think Softball of- Softball team, baseball team, swim team, they're all, they're inviting them and they we are. see connections and it's, it's a little mission field and it's like, wow, they're really making this impact. Yeah, it was yeah. so exciting. Yeah. And now I think about the, another building 
And I think about all the, what is the new spiritual impact going to be? What is the thing that we don't even know is coming that is going to be such a beautiful story that God has already written? Heather was obviously very excited. I, um, I, I understood it. I, it made total sense. We needed it. And I began to catch myself thinking like, yeah, they should do that. The church should ask, absolutely do that. They need to do it. And I was saying they and them and the church, and it was never we. So I started looking at the finances and I went back to the previous campaigns and looked at what we were making then as a family and what we gave kind of over and above and then ratioed it out and to see what we would give now. And, and I just wasn't there. I, I, I had plans for this money and, and they weren't lavish plans. They weren't, I'm gonna go buy a boat or I'm gonna go buy a beach house or a lake house or we're gonna all go to Italy first class. It was nothing like that. It was, our house is 35 years old. We, we need to do some fixing. We need to add insulation. My car is 15 years old. We need to get that. I wanna start saving for weddings and more for retirement, like good plans. But I hadn't prayed about it. I hadn't asked God to bless those plans and I really just wasn't feeling it. So I, I asked Heather to pray with me. I prayed on my own and God was so faithful. It was, he, he was so gentle. Um, it was so much more of, David, let me remind you of the joy. David, let me show you more of myself. And time after time and memory after memory of my kids being impacted, of our marriage being impacted. And he kept giving me this image of me holding tighter and tighter. And, and the, more, the more money we made, it was, being, it, was, it was harder for me to give it away. And I was like, why, why is this happening? And, and through really Heather's, Heather's leading of, David, remember this in the building? Remember when we were all in portables and now look at the children's building and now look, there's room for the softball player. Just time and time again of all of these experiences that we've had. And she could just see so much better than I could of what God was gonna do in these new building, uh, in the new facility, uh, with the new adult space, just all of these things. And, and as the images started to come, as Ken started to share the vision more and more, uh, I was able to come on board. And I'm just grateful that God was patient with me in the journey. Um, and that Heather was patient with me in the journey. Um, and now I'm really excited. I, at first I knew it in my mind, but now I know it in my heart that this is gonna be something that's gonna be a blessing to the community uh, and to Faith Bridgers that aren't here yet. And for my kids and maybe their kids. And when, when they showed the chapel, I was like, yeah, you know, I bet our kids get married there. <laughs> and I bet I get buried. You know, it's like, I, I, it just started permeating my heart much more than my mind. And I stopped holding on so tight. So when Pastor Ken talked to Heather and I, um, he gave us the three R's and it was the reachable, reprioritize and rely. It just, just like he had said, my eye went straight to a number um, and that was reachable. Well, and when he does this, he loves Excel. He okay. is the Excel spreadsheet man. So all of the finances are in there and he has all the formulas. So you put that in. And so he was on the computer looking at, okay, this is, this is very reachable. It's so easy, we can do this. Okay, but if we tweak this and as he's doing that, all the formulas start to re, you know, figure and this is, if we reach, this is what we can do. And then we really started to pray about, okay. How to re reprioritize. And then the rely part was so hard. Um, the rely part was really stepping out. And, and God has been faithful in other campaigns and I don't know why. I don't know why it's so hard for me. Uh, he's been faithful every, every time we've done other campaigns. We've gone beyond what we thought and God has been faithful to provide even more. And, and, and he reminded me of that joy because in the last campaign we were able to give even more and I remember feeling so proud, so proud writing that last check. Um, and, and it was over and above what we had promised, but I was still holding on so tight. And so we did, we went to rely and, and we went, I don't have a line of sight. I'm sorry, Ken, I, I, I don't have a line <laughs> of sight of how we're gonna get there, God is gonna have to provide. And, and I know he will.